Good morning, ITA. Welcome to Volgograd, Russia. It's 9 a.m. here, so let's get the day started. All right, so the kids have just had breakfast and are now cleaning up their rooms and getting ready for the day. I'm preparing for my lesson today and today is the last day of lessons. So I'm excited that you'll get to see that. Um, each year our camp has a different theme for the whole duration of the camp. This year we are time travelers. So the name of our camp is Out of Time for this season. And so today we are traveling back um, to the 19th century to learn about the Industrial Revolution has got a display it has a display okay yes. anything else oh. what else is different about those two phones and uh, in your simple phone you can only call to another person and um, on smartphone you can play mobile games maybe yep that's true perfect what what do we say when the air is dirty it starts with a p anyone pollution pollution perfect thank you dima when richard uh trevis trevis uh pen uh penny darren Carried uh, ten tons of e iron, five wagons, and seventy men. Nineteen. Oh, nine uh, points. Nine, nine point, uh, seventy-five minutes. In, miles. Miles. In four hours and five minutes. Perfect. Good job. It's number five. Number five. Number yes. Um, urban life is uh, better than rural, uh, rural because um, it's, uh, there, are, there are many shops, uh, supermarkets in uh, the cities, and um, there are many jobs. Okay, what else? Uh, on the seats, uh, more uh, concerts and shops. Okay. Oh, it's, uh, it's good because uh, people who uh, live there, uh, they're very uh, They're very what? Who can help her? They are very healthy. Healthy? Why? Because they are not uh, air pollution. No air pollution. Because good. they are not uh, cars. No cars. Good. Anything else? The people eat healthy food. They eat healthy food. Good. Anything else? That's it? All right. Good. Okay, everyone. So classes are over. They are an hour and a half long. We actually did some exams. Um, so I got to proctor some speaking exams and Jordan did as well. The kids are at lunch now, so we're going to join them in the canteen. And after lunch, I'll show you what kinds of activities we're doing today. This is our beautiful camp. It's called Camp Orlonek. Here in Volgograd, the summers are actually pretty hot. It's not too bad right now. I think it's in the 80s with a light breeze. So it's pretty good summer weather. Here you can see we have a little volleyball court. We don't typically use um, like this court, but other campers do. This campsite actually has hundreds of kids, but our camp program has 120 kids this term. All right, we're coming up onto the canteen. I'm not sure if I'll have time to show you, but we also have a swimming pool. We have a medical center with a doctor who's here 24 seven. We have a place where we can wash our clothes by hand if you wanna do some laundry. And we just, it's a pretty good sized campsite. It is enclosed, so, you know, kids don't get lost. I mean, not really anywhere they can run off to, um, but it's really nice. It's just really beautiful here. I love it.
this by colour. It also helps to have a picture of what it will look like. The correct answer is A. All right, so one question we have is, as a non-native speaker, can I still teach in Russia? I think you can. Most teachers in Russia are Russians teaching English as a foreign language. Um, I think the only issue with you not being a Russian and not being a native speaker is that it's really difficult for Russian businesses to hire foreigners. So I'm technically not even an employee here. I'm a volunteer. Um, but I'm here on a humanitarian visa, which I'll talk about more in response to another question. So I think it'll be more difficult if you're not a native English speaker. So you might want to message me and we can talk about it a little more directly. Okay, this is a really good question and I'm going to elaborate on it quite a bit. In short, yes, I did have trouble getting my visa for Russia. So let me tell you right now, if you're an American, trying to get a if you're an american trying to get a visa for russia you are going to run into some issues i know that we had a consulate in san francisco and they actually got shut down i don't really know all the details why but that's where we used to send all of our documents like at least in my part of the country where i'm from arizona we would send our documents to the consulate in san francisco for processing they got shut down so now all of our documents have to be sent to washington dc um, and that's how Jordan, who's here with me from Arizona, that's how she had to get her visa to come to Russia. And um, she applied for a three-year tourist visa, and they didn't approve her for three years. She got approved for six months, single entry. When I applied for my visa, that was in 2017. I applied in, I think it was March is when I sent my documents. It took like two months to get just my visa back after like I already had my passport and everything and so I literally got my visa in New York City the day before my flight to Moscow so it was like really like last minute I just I got it just in the nick of time so it was really stressful um, so if you're trying to come to Russia to teach and you're applying for a visa, I would suggest applying for the visa at least six months in advance and have your visa ready for you before you even like secure anything unless you have an employer who's willing to pay for the visa and all the fees and processing and all of that.